In this video I'll show you 9 things that almost everyone always does wrong, especially number 3 and 7 surprised me a lot. Let's start with number 1. For example, what do you do if you have a cutter knife and the blade is no longer sharp? Then you simply break off the tip here. After all, that's what cutter knives are designed for. But how exactly do you do it? Actually you take the cutter knife, then you press it on the floor or somewhere on the wall so that the blade breaks off here at the predetermined breaking point. But that is actually the wrong way to do it. There is a built-in method that works much better and that is to use the rear part of the cutter knife because you can always pull this off with almost all cutter knives. And if you take a closer look at the whole thing you will see that we have a slit here on this side. And this slit is exactly mean for us to go over the blade with it. Because exactly one part of the blade always fits in here. Now you can push this part to the side and break off the blade perfectly. In addition the blade does not fly around but you have it stuck here in the cap and can dispose of it easily and safely. The second thing is about such jaws because it's not always easy to open them. Due to the vacuum the first opening is actually quite difficult and not everyone can open such a jaw directly. But instead of trying to open it with all your might there is a much simpler method. And all you need is your hands. Place them on the rim as you can see in my picture and press the palms of your hands together. You will then hear a slight crack. The air has now flowed into the glass, the vacuum is no longer there and you can open the jar really quickly and above all very easily. As you can see here I can now push the lid and open the jar really quickly and easily. Another thing that many people use incorrectly is a peeler. Surely you have one at home to peel vegetables or potatoes. But did you know that there is a much simpler method? Most people probably use it by pulling it from the top down then putting it down and pulling it from the top down again. But if you take a closer look at the peeler you might notice that there is a blade on both sides. Of course, this is not the case with all peelers but with most of them. So take a closer look at yours because if this is the case then you can peel by going from top to bottom and staying on top of the potato. As you can see here I can peel this way but I can also peel this way. With a little practice you can do it really quickly and peel potatoes or vegetables in a much shorter time. Most people even open letters the wrong way because there is an easier method than the one you are looking at now. Most of the time you only get the first part of the letter open and then you have to go through it with your finger like this and everything gets torn open everywhere and doesn't look very nice in the end. The method I'm going to show you now is also much easier and faster. You take a letter again and start as usual. Then right after the first part you tear a little tear like this. But now you don't go through it with your thumb, you just pull it open sideways. Now you have opened the letter once from the side and you can easily take the contents out and put them back in again. Not only is it easier but it also looks a little better. Then the next thing is about candles because like many other people you certainly always put out your candles the wrong way. Because most people blow so that the fire goes out. But what happens then is exactly what you can see here now. The fire does go out but there is also a lot of smoke and this usually lasts for some time until the embers are completely extinguished. But there is a much easier and quicker way to put out the candles. All you need is a small pointed object. I have such a wooden skewer but you can also use anything made of metal. With this you should now go to your wick and push it slightly to the side and drown it in the candle wax. This has several advantages because as you can see there is absolutely no smoke formation. This means that you no longer have this problem and the second advantage is that the wick is now coated with candle wax. This means that the next time you light the candle it will be much easier and faster. That's why it's best to always put out your candles this way. Even bin liners many people always use wrong because if you want to put a new bin liner in your bin you probably rip one off the roll and start like this. First you open it, shake it apart so that it's completely open. Then you push the bottom part into your bin and when you've done you push the edges over the edge of the bin. But this is actually wrong because if you take a closer look at the bin liner you will see that the edge is now the wrong way around. Because the bin liners are always placed the other way round on the roll. 
In fact, the bin liner manufacturers have thought of something. There is a method that makes it much easier. To do this, you tear off your bin liner again, but now you put it over the edge the wrong way round, as you can see here. Then you have already placed it perfectly on the edge and now you only have to press the middle part into the bin. And you've already placed your bin liner perfectly in the bin. And with a little practice, the whole thing is much quicker than the other variant that you have probably always used up to now. If you use post-its regularly, you will probably be surprised to learn that there is also a wrong way to peel them off. And in fact, almost all people use this wrong method. Because you certainly know the problem with it. You take off a post-it like I did here and afterwards you can see that it is already very curled. That's because we pull it off in this way. You can see here that the whole thing is curling upwards. Which means that the post-it doesn't hold so well. Because the adhesive side is already so deformed, it happens that when you stick it somewhere it slowly moves further and further upwards and eventually falls off. There is actually a very simple and different way to remove it so that it exactly this does not happen. To do this you should not peel off the little sticky note from the bottom upwards but from the side as you can see here. Then you won't have this problem at all. As you can see it is hardly wavy now or rather not from the bottom to the top but more in the middle. And if we stick it on here now you can also see the clear difference because this post-it now hangs clearly more straight downwards while the other one which we took off in the other way points more upwards and so it will hold much better in the future. And even if it sounds strange now but even a pasta strainer can be used incorrectly or there is simply a variant that works much easier because most of the time you will certainly do it the way I'm going to show you now. You have cooked the noodles or rice and now put the colander in the sink and then tip them directly into the colander. This allows the water to drain off. You let it drain again and then you will probably tip the noodles back into the pot. But instead of doing it this way, you should try it the other way around. Because it really is easier and also much quicker. To do this, place the pot in your sink, push the strainer in from above and then simply tip the water away. This way the water can escape through the holes and the pasta stays in your pot. And last but not least, you should never throw away this part of oil bottles in the future because you can also use it for a little ingenious trick. If you have an oil bottle with a lid like this and this cap underneath, you can now pull it out. But instead of throwing it in the rubbish, here's what you should do with it. Squeeze the handle where you pulled it out a little bit and now put this handle first into the oil bottle. You are basically just turning the whole thing around. The handle is pushed into the hole at the top and the other one slowly follows. In the end it should look like this. Because the advantage is that now you have a much smaller opening. This means that if you want to use some of the oil and pour it into your pan, you can measure it out much more easily. Would you also like to know 8 more tricks to keep your home smelling great? Then be sure to watch the video I'm linking to you here. You would make me really happy if you click the like button and subscribe to my channel.